In this video, I would like to touch very quickly on a relay selection in automotive. So automotive relays, they are used to automate contact switching. So by using a relay, you can switch a higher power contact by using a lower power circuit. And the relay usually it has a metal core, a metal frame. It has a spring that uh, holds a contact. This metal core has a coil around it, a copper coil. And when this coil is magnetized with an electrical current, it's going to attract an electrical contact. So it's going to switch on a different contact. So if you're not an electrical engineer and you don't know what a relay is, I recommend you to research more on uh, YouTube because you can find a lot of videos that show relays working. So the relay is going to have a coil power, voltage and current draw that gets connected to the coil that uh, it's actually the signal to switch on that relay and then it's going to have working contacts that are going to be connected to another circuit so automotive relays have many parameters depending on where they are used there are quite a few type of relays and relays and fuses in automotive companies are usually being selected by the relay and fuse engineer or department so as a harness design engineer you're not going to do relay selection and uh, you're not going to do fuse selection so they're not going to ask you to do all of those because that does not because it's not possible for one person to do harness and uh, relays this is a different department this is a different person but the reason why they ask that at interviews is because they want to know if you can deal with uh, relays because also relays they are connected with uh, wires and uh, connectors so to the fuse box you have wires that go inside and uh, they have to be connected to those relays so you need to have some knowledge and uh, for relays that's why this video it's not going to teach you everything about relay selection that's a more complex subject and it's not for this course so this is only for harness designers so the EDS or harness designer needs to know how needs to know how to understand and read the circuits that travel around relays and fuses. So a few terms around here. When you have a relay at rest, this means that uh, the coil is not magnetized. So the relay is not working and the contact is not on. And relay energized, it's when the coil is magnetized. You have electricity going through the coil and the contact is closed. But this is just a small example because there are many types of contacts that uh, automotive relays might have. So relay contact configuration. There are a few types of uh, relay contact configuration that uh, they are being used and uh, they have their own names. So a make and break, it's a relay that has only two contacts, like the one that we showed on the previous page. If the contact is open with the relay at rest, it is called a normally open. So you might have a relay that normally it's an open contact, it's a break contact. But if the contact is closed with the relay at rest, it's called a normally closed. So you might have a contact that it's normally closed and when uh, the coil gets energized, that contact is gonna get open. So for example, this is a normally open contact, NO here, because it's normally open. But if you magnetize it, is going to close so it's going to be closed but if this contact here with this red wire it would be on this other side so it will be normally closed when it's not magnetized and then when then when you magnetize it the contact is going to move and it's going to open the contact so if the relay has three contacts with one of them being common then it's called a changeover relay so this is different from the make and break relay, which is simpler. So a changeover relay is going to have two contacts, one normally closed and another one normally open. So this is a changeover relay. It's going to have a contact here that is going to be normally closed all the time. And the other one is going to be normally open. But when you magnetize the coil, the contact moves and is going to reverse them. So you're going to have here this contact that is normally open is going to be closed and the contact that is normally closed is going to be open. Make and break relays is just a name, but they are also called single pole, single throw, an SPST. This is how you're going to find in data sheets and the suppliers. 
and the changeover relays are called single pole double throw, so CPDT. So SPDT. There are other contact configuration, but those are the most commonly used. And the relay might have three pairs of uh, contacts, like uh, this one with double throw, or it might have three pairs of uh, single throw contacts. And here we have a few type of relay and contact configuration relay with diode across coil. So when voltage is removed from uh, terminals 85, 86. Now here I would like to discuss uh, a few things about uh, relay selection criteria. Even if uh, you're not going to do this, but uh, it's good to know. If uh, you get asked at an interview and you want to have a conversation about this, uh, to let them know that you know a few things about relays. Current rating in them. Here are some more complex relay types. There are other relay design that are used for some more complex application in vehicle systems. They are still based upon the principle of switching higher current circuits using smaller current circuits, but often combine this with electronics to perform special functions. So some examples are glow plug relays type. Fuel injection relays provide power to the electrically activated fuel injector in grid. Then you have timer relays, for example, in a circuit for a heated more flasher relays units used for you. So those are a few information about relay selection. As I already said, if you're a harness design engineer, you're not going to deal with this, but you just need to know what's a relay and what type of wires you are going to connect to that relay. So obviously you need to, if you have a special relay, if you have a specialty relay, you need to study very well the contact configuration of that relay. And maybe you also need to get in contact with the engineer with the relay and fuse department because you want to make sure that you're using the right wires. Maybe you have special wires around there if uh, those circuits they go to safety circuits inside the vehicle. If not, you need to know what's the rating of the voltage for the contacts so you know what type of wires you use and what's the rating and the voltage for the coil so you know what type of wires you are going to use there and many times you can find that on your own because you look at the circuit diagram and you see how circuits travel from a relay to a certain ECU or some other stuff so this is how you find out you need to study first and after that you need to ask other people this is the best way so if you're on an interview and you are asked about a relay it's not about selection it's more about being able to read those information on diagrams so what I recommend you is to watch this video several times, take notes and remember the information about this. So when you go at an interview, you can have a conversation about uh, relays because again, there is not a one word answer. So I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video.